Hello everyone and welcome to my review for Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 245. Uh, first things first, there's some work going on, I guess, at my neighbor's place. Uh, I was awoken like an hour earlier than usual by someone power drilling some sort of like metal railing or something. Uh, so if there's loud noise going on, I'll probably cut those out of the video. So if there are any sudden cuts of any kind, that's probably what it is. Um, and you know, the usual like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, let's try and hit 100 likes on this week's review. So this week's chapter, I thought was pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. There's a certain part of it that uh, a lot of people are not really liking. Um, and you know, my initial reaction to it was like, mm, I guess it makes sense. And currently, that's still my reaction to it. I guess it makes sense. It's not the most, oh my god, this is terrible, but like, satisfactory plot twist in the world. It's just kind of like a, an okay plot twist, I guess. Nothing crazy. But I think it makes sense. Uh, based on what we know about Higuruma and his technique, so I'll be sure to get into that. Uh, but before we get to the stuff with Sukuna, we of course have the first part of this chapter in which we have Hikari's fight with Urayume, a fight that we've mostly been cut away from, uh, and by that I mean we've been cut away from it uh, since it started, um, yeah, pretty much since it started, um, that I don't think really anyone expected, um, and I personally am uh, very interested in because it's finally an opportunity for Urayume to get a real showcasing of their power and it's another Hikari fight so you know why wouldn't I want to see that now we get shown and are told some really interesting things here uh, for starters Frost Calm Urayume's big technique freezes people using Urayume's cursed energy. So Urayume seems to be another person whose uh, cursed energy is, it's got like a property like other people's does, like Hikari's, how conveniently, and like Kashimo's. It's called the true essence of ice sorcery. Uh, whether that means it's just like their maximum, pretty much, um, or if there are, like, other people who've done some kind of ice sorcery before. Um, don't know if uh, Ryume's technique is an inherited one or if it's unique to them. I don't know. Now, there were some things I was wondering previously. If Urayume's technique is actually a good counter to Hakari uh, because it doesn't necessarily damage him. But the way Urayume is using it is super damaging. She's basically flash freezing his limbs, like with liquid nitrogen, and shattering them. Like the T-1000 or something. But he just heals right through it. Now, on the one hand, Urayume didn't really know Hakari's whole gimmick. Um, they are amazed by his regeneration, saying that it surpasses Sukuna and Gojo. Um, I saw a tweet talking about, you know, the glazing being crazy. I gotta say, and, you know, people pointed it out, how it happens a lot. What the fuck is glazing to you? Is it just when someone acknowledges the reality of how much better another character is like when they acknowledge how strong someone is and that's like objectively true is it glazing what do you want them to be fucking delusional i mean shit when kashimo analyzed sakuna and saw perfection and he was like god it's beautiful what i mean yeah like it, it you know it's very complimentary but you know from the perspective of a sorcerer, Sukuna is perfect. And from the perspective of someone who basically worships strength and power, he is beautiful. It seems completely in character for him to say these things. I feel like... 
there are way too many people that are far too invested in character and power scaling agendas, and they're just stands of specific characters as opposed to fans of the narrative. It wouldn't be the first time for not just a Shonen Jump series, really anything in all honesty. Um, but the way Uraima is fighting here, I don't think maximizes just how effective it could maybe be against Hikari. I think it's theoretically possible for Urayume to one-tap Hakari, and that's by freezing his entire body and then destroying it. I'm pretty sure that could actually kill him during Jackpot. I don't know how easy that would be to accomplish, but I think that's like an actual way they could do it. Um, I guess it would depend on if, you know, he still has brain activity, like if his brain is healing through being flash frozen. I don't know, but I, I think that could actually work. Because Kashima was going to blow up Hakari's brain, and that would have succeeded in killing him. As far as we could tell, I mean, even Hakari, you know, he had to do something about that. Or he was still going to die, even though he was in his jackpot. So I think Urayume is equipped to kill Hakari in jackpot, um, but actually getting him into the necessary state to kill him is easier said than done. Um, so yeah, they're, they're tussling with each other. It's pretty cool. The action in this sequence here is really good. Hakari throws a kick into Urayume. They freeze his leg, but he just breaks off his own leg to drop kick Urayume in the face. And send them through several buildings. It's great. It's really good. Um, we get a little bit of insight into Urayume's character beyond being Sukuna's servant. Uh, they are pretty much just espousing parts of his ideology about how modern sorcerers are afraid of losing their humanity. They're afraid of being ostracized by the rest of mankind for being monstrous, and that causes them to restrain their power. I'm so glad I released that video yesterday about being the strongest. You guys should go watch it, because I kind of talk about some of this stuff a little bit. More so just they're afraid of being alone. But it seems like sorcerers back in the day, back in the Heian, didn't really care about that stuff. They just wanted to get stronger. And that's probably why so many of them became so strong. Uh, you know, it's, it's just Sukuna's mindset. They don't care about being alone, being solitary. All they care about is becoming even more powerful. Um, so Urayume does something pretty cool. They freeze the pipes in the street so water starts bursting out, and I imagine they're going to start freezing all that water. Uh, so, you know, making good use of the environment. I like it. Hakari talks a bit about uh, Yuta mentioning this stuff about humanity, remaining human. Uh, and he's like, is this some trend going on now? Uh, everyone's talking about this. Um, and he gives some big props to Yuta here, which is nice. Then he says, I'm getting real hyped up here. Bring me an ice cola. Bring me a fucking beer. Yeah, that's good. Also, he, uh, he takes off his jacket. He's got, like, a tank top on under here. New Hakari drip has materialized. It's a black tank top instead of the, like, white one he had before. So, yeah, that's the fight going on between Hakari and Urayume. It's pretty good so far. Uh, I hope we still get to see some more of it, because um, for, like, a side fight, it's really good, in all honesty. I'm, I'm really digging it. We get back to the trial here. We get back to the case against Sukuna. And I gotta be honest, I really like what's going on here. Higuruma, he's given the whole spiel. He's talking about everything. Uh, he's got his internal monologue going on about the facts of the case, um, their chances for being able to get the death penalty against him. And Sukuna's just like, man, quit wasting so much time. You talk so much. I already know how this domain works. I only care about that cool insta-kill sword you have. I don't care about what I did or when I did it. Let's get this over with. So he just pleads guilty so he can immediately get the death penalty. And Judgment. Oh boy, has this panel sparked a lot of uh, discourse. 
a lot of theorizing I've seen in regards to this panel, because one of Judgment's eyes opened so far that the seams literally burst off of it. Now, the whole eyes being sewn shut thing is clearly meant to be a more macabre version of the blindfold covering the eyes of Lady Justice. You know, justice is impartial, it's blind justice. It doesn't have any sort of biases for or against the people who stand accused. Now, I've seen a few different interpretations. The most absurd of those interpretations are the ones saying that Sukuna has somehow altered the rules of the domain or altered Judgment's behavior. I, I, I don't even know how that would happen. I, I don't think that's possible. I don't think Sukuna has that much sauce. I don't think he's going into other people's domains and changing the way they work. Um, so, um, I'm not buying into that at all. Um, the least interesting one, I suppose, is that there are two people here who stand accused. It's both Yuji and Sukuna. And the eye that's bursting open is the one looking at Sukuna, basically saying, you're the one that's guilty, not this guy. And I guess the, the weight, I don't know, it shifts so much into that other side that the eye bursts open. The other one I've seen, which is the one I like the most, uh, especially because of how angry and frightening Judgment looked uh, when Yuji pled guilty, it was that Sakuna has admitted to crimes that are so heinous that it's impossible for Judgment to not be biased. It's impossible for them to be impartial in the face of what Sakuna's done. Um, obviously, the latter of those two is much more interesting you know it's more poignant and as such i like it more um so you know that's what i'm going for it's just sakuna is so fucking evil the things he's done are so terrible that even judgment can't turn a blind eye to it so the domain ends and you'll notice something here um kamutoke isn't in sakuna's hand anymore and this is where we get to the thing in this chapter that a lot of people don't really like the thing that a lot of these people are calling an ass pull ass pull i don't know convenience yeah it's, it's a bit of a plot convenience those are known to happen from time to time and they're not great they're not the worst thing ever but you know they don't feel super satisfying uh however i think it's all right is a showcasing for some of the flaws in higuruma's power because higuruma's ability is very busted but one of its flaws is how complicated it is and how many caveats there are, which makes sense given that Higuruma's power is based on his understanding of the Japanese legal system. Legal systems in general are very complex and they tend to be very flawed, especially when the person whose understanding of the Japanese legal system it's based on thinks that the system is flawed and inefficient. Now, we have our backup squad here. Ino, Chozo, and Kusakabe. Ino, I don't really know what you're doing here. I see that your other eye is back, which is, is good. So, you know, I, I guess you just had the other eye closed because you just took off the ski mask. Um, you did really only get your singular major showcasing against Toji. Same shit probably would have happened to any other grade one, so I can't really hold it against you that hard. Um, but as Higuruma gets the Executioner's Sword, he realizes something. And also there's an internal monologue here. Do you have a death wish, Higuruma? I'm very curious if that's in Higuruma's mind or somewhere else. Um, we have this panel of Higuruma standing here with the sword, and around him we got Kusakabe... Ino and Yuji getting ready to leap into the scene, and it looks like Chozo is about to perform a piercing blood. Again, Sukuna doesn't have Kamutoke here. He's got his two lower hands clasped together to do the hand sign, and he's got his upper left arm out to perform his technique, which he shouldn't be able to do because we got the death penalty, and more likely than not, Shrine has been confiscated because... He maybe lost 10 shadows through his fight with Gojo. I've kind of wondered if 
this transformation, this complete overriding of Megumi's body would leave him unable to use 10 shadows. I don't know. But also, he doesn't have Maharaga anymore. Maharaga served its purpose. So I don't know how much he would rely on using 10 shadows anyway. I still wouldn't be shocked if he decides to use it. Especially being able to do like two different hand signs at the same time seems really useful. Um, but as these guys are rushing in to get Sukuna, as his technique's been taken away, Higuruma and Sukuna realize something. There is a problem with this golden opportunity that they were trying to grab onto. It's that the shrine wasn't confiscated. Kamutoke was confiscated. Because when someone in Higuruma's domain has a weapon, when they have a cursed tool, the confiscation takes away the cursed tool instead of the technique. Now this seems really convenient. Because, you know, Sukuna just got given this cursed tool right after the fight. He's barely used it for anything. It seems like it, that will be its biggest contribution to this battle, is giving him an escape from confiscation. And that ultimately is the narrative purpose of the tool. Like, there, there, there's no if ands, or buts about it. That's pretty much what it did. Yorozu's greatest contribu uh, contribution to Sukuna was saving him from getting his technique stolen. Great. Thanks, Yorozu. Anyway, a lot of people really don't like this because it's very convenient. And, yeah, it is convenient. However, I think it kind of makes sense uh, when one... You look at the way confiscation has been shown to work, that for sorcerers, it usually only targets their technique. It will only take away their cursed energy if they don't have a technique, when it would be more efficient for it to just always take away someone's cursed energy. Because then they really can't do much of anything most of the time if they don't have any cursed energy. If you take away their technique, they're still very disoriented and a lot of them won't really know how to fight but you can still enhance your body with cursed energy. You can still heal yourself. It would be so much more efficient if Judgment confiscated cursed energy for everyone, but it doesn't. Why? Why does it go for the least efficient option? Of course, if you have a weak sorcerer who has a very strong cursed tool, this would be good, actually. You know, you'd be taking away their most powerful weapon. And that's kind of the idea. Is that the technique is based off Higuruma's understanding of the Japanese legal system. Confiscation typically means you're confiscating a weapon from the defendant. The technique isn't based around... The Jujutsu world is based around the normal world. The way that it interacts with Jujutsu sorcerers is just sort of a byproduct of Higuruma being one and encountering sorcerers. Um, so it will just target whatever it considers to be the defendant's weapon, be that their cursed energy, their cursed technique, or an actual weapon if they have one. Um, so it kind of makes sense from that perspective. Another thing that's interesting here is how this confiscation being really ineffectual uh, is honestly really in line with Higuruma's character and his beliefs. Uh, Kamutoke had nothing to do with the Shibuya incident. Sukuna didn't have that weapon when he did his massacre. It, it was a weapon completely unrelated to the crime, yet that was what was confiscated. Um, and I think this ineffectual action is a really good reflection of how ineffectual Hiruma thinks the Japanese legal system is, especially given how a lot of the times it will convict innocent people for crimes they didn't commit. So, you know... A lot of the stuff that's happened uh, in the last stretch of chapters, you know, basically, you know, the end of the Gojo fight to now. There's been a lot of things that people really haven't liked that I've seen. 
And a lot of the time what happens is it happens and they go, I don't like that. I see it and I go, huh, that's kind of shocking, interesting. And then I think more about how these things work thematically and then I'm like, wow, I really like this. This is really good. It just kind of keeps happening. It just keeps happening. And I don't know why. It's like Gege knows exactly what I like. And I don't even realize that I like it either until he puts it to paper. Um, yeah. Um, hmm, there's definitely another thing I was thinking of here. Hmm, what was it? Uh, eh, probably just some kind of complaining about people being stupid. I don't know. I complain about that every week. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, situation here is not great. You know, Sukuna still got his technique. However, we do have the Executioner Sword now. So we do have a means of killing Sukuna. It's just that actually hitting him with it is gonna be harder than we already thought it was going to be so you know that's not great um Eno is probably getting fed into the Sukuna meat grinder in all honesty or maybe not because I, I don't think really that many people actually care about Eno um Kusakabe here Kusakabe this man blocked the Nuzumaki which was very impressive he managed to get in front of Higuruma before those slashes hit him which is great those were not the fucking world cutting slashes. They were not. We saw the movement before they arrived. Um, and also, Sukuna said he was interested in the Executioner's Sword. Why the fuck would he say that and then go, uh, but I'm just gonna kill Higuruma instantly? He's doing what he does. He's playing around for the sake of his own amusement. Sukuna is one of those people where they get so good at a game they like. They just start imposing restrictions upon themselves to do challenge runs. You know, he's playing Sekiro and he's decided to beat all the bosses by only doing uh, deflections and counters. No actual attacks. That's how he's deciding to play the game right now. So, you know, he, he's, he's so strong that he's like, I don't even need... Why, it would be excessive for me to use all of my power against these people. So, you know, I'm just going to try some shit out. I'm just going to try some stuff. I'm going to play around a little bit. I'm going to see what's fun. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're just going to find out how that works. Um, which, you know, is pretty much what Sukuna's always done. Uh, so nothing really new there. Um, yeah, I think next chapter, assuming we're going to stay focused on the Sukuna fight, which I imagine we are, um, unless we're going to cut away to the Hakari and Urayume fight again, um, we are going to see these guys doing their damnedest to clear a path for Higuruma. They are going to be trying so fucking hard to keep this guy alive and get him close enough to Sukuna to hit him with the Executioner Sword. That's what they're going to be doing. Is it going to work? I have no idea. Uh, they're still doing this plan somewhat based around the idea that Yuta is going to return to help them out, and that will obviously make a very big difference, but I imagine Kenjaku is going to be up to something that they weren't really prepared for. Some version of the merger is still probably going to happen at some point, and I imagine it's probably going to be something to do with that. Um, no, I don't think Yuta's getting off-screened, and also I'm very confident that Maki is probably going there with him, because, well, a Yuta and Maki team-up would be really cool. Um, that feels like something that's just kind of been waiting to happen for a very long time. Um, and uh, she's not here. And you you have to wonder, if she's not here, where else would she be? You know? Um, so that, that's presumably where. Uh, so at the very least, these guys here are trying to buy time until Utah arrives. Um, and uh, at the most, they're going to try to kill Sukuna here. I don't know how well that's going to work out for them. Uh, so we are just going to have to wait and see. Do I have anything else to say? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Nah, I think that's pretty much it. So with that, that's all I've got for this week's review. If you guys enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss 
any of my uploads. I do Jujutsu Kaisen chapter reactions and reviews every week that we get a new chapter. If you enjoy discussing Jujutsu Kaisen with other people or you just enjoy the content I produce in this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.